What's going on guys, it's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're driving my Colorado ZR2. It's got almost 30,000 miles and it's ext been extremely dependable. I have had zero issues with this truck, which I'm very happy about. So for today's video, I wanna share five tips and tricks to make sure your new diesel or uh, truck or car last as long as possible and to make sure they stay reliable because there's a few things that really you really need to do to make sure that these trucks and if you have a car trucks uh, cars as well run run better with these new emission systems as you guys know all of these trucks all of these newer trucks including the semis the, the big big rigs use def fluid they use dpf systems they have very aggressive exhaust gas recirculation so there's a bunch of different things that these vehicles have that basically can choke up your engine if you don't do things properly so this is the video that's going to go over five things to make sure that all of those problems that can arise don't happen to your truck so the first thing i want to mention is of course don't let your truck idle truck or car idle for very long avoid any type of idling as much as you can because idling these trucks can be a very big problem i've actually learned this from my from using my kubota skid steer my kubota sbl 75 unfortunately it also has a dpf even those off-road vehicles use dpf systems now if you want to follow along on, on, the, on the kubota you can go ahead and subscribe to my modern outdoor living channel i'll leave a link down below and uh, i take this truck off-road on that channel it's basically my my diary as you say of my uh, of my farm as, as i build it up but i've learned a lot and one of the things is if you let your vehicle idle for too long at low speeds your dpf will get clogged up like you wouldn't believe and actually for this truck specifically for the zr2 not just your dpf but your def injection system also will clog up because they're not designed really to to inject urea into the system unless your vehicle is moving along and your dpf requires a ton of heat in order for it to work properly so don't idle your truck don't idle your diesel car especially if it has if you haven't deleted it if it has if it has dpf you will definitely coke it up and you will cause a lot of long-term reliability issues a lot of people have had a lot of problems with that and they've actually amended they've had to amend the manuals in these trucks and in these other older diesel vehicles to make sure that you know not to idle your, your truck so the second one i want to mention and this again has to do with getting your, your vehicle up to temperature is don't just take short trips make sure you take long trips with your truck or your diesel car it's super important for these vehicles again the emission system that this thing has worked very very well when you're taking this out for long trips the dpf the diesel particular filter if you don't know what that is it's basically a big honeycomb expensive honeycomb a uh, little system will filter the air passes through and collects all the soot so basically it collects all the diesel particular soot you know if you've ever seen a non-dpf diesel vehicle you see the black soot black smoke coming out well that's called soot and that stays in that dpf and it actually it does a really decent job at, 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 at keeping it and then what it does every once in a while it does a regeneration now in order to do any of that in order to, to make sure that that dpf stays clear of any blockages the DPF system needs to get up to high temperatures. And if you're only doing short distances, I almost guarantee you, you're not getting it up to high enough temperature. So be sure to take those long trips, make sure that your DPF is breathing properly. Otherwise that thing is gonna get clogged. And I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but it's about $1,200 to get that thing replaced for most vehicles. I definitely don't wanna spend that. So long trips, go ahead and do that. So again, very similar to long trips, similar to don't let it idle. Don't always drive it gently. Every once in a while, on one of your long trips, put your foot in it. And what I mean is, put that pedal to the metal, get the vehicle up to temperature, especially your truck. Make sure that turbo is spooled up and make sure you're getting a lot of good heat in there. So what that does is a number of things. First, if you're flooring it, your EGR system usually shuts off. Your exhaust gas recirculation is or shuts off or it gets less aggressive, which means less soot for your intake system that saves you in the long run again that egr system is a lot, a lot of people forget about the egr system in these cars and it's not very good to get that egr system always spewing that black smoke into your engine 
Another thing is, if you don't spool up your turbo, you don't get everything up to temperature, uh, you can get something called fuel dilution. And what that means is that since these are direct injection vehicles, these diesel, all diesel vehicles are, if you don't drive them up to temperature, if you don't get them nice and hot, you can get some diesel fuel stuck in the oil. And if, again, if you don't get up to temperature, it will stay there. It will cause your oil in your vehicle to dilute. And basically it'll be a diesel and oil mixture. Now, that's, this is less of a problem in diesel cars because diesel fuel is kind of a lubricant as well. It's not quite as good as engine oil. It is a problem, more problem in, uh, in gasoline direct injection vehicles. Those for sure, you wanna make sure you get up to temperature. But again, making sure you drive your truck very hard. Try to tow with it, honestly. I don't, if you own a Colorado diesel, especially you know ZR2, any kind of Colorado diesel, any kind of Chevrolet diesel, you need to tow with it to just break it in. Within the first 10,000 miles of you owning it, you should definitely put weights in the back. If you can, start towing with it, because until you do that, I guarantee you, you are not gonna break in your diesel engine. I felt that my diesel engine got way better mileage, way better power and it just broke in way better after I did my first towing job which was at around 7,000 miles so at 7,000 miles the engine was not yet broken in can you imagine that so these engines definitely value being driven hard and being used very very hard they love it they perform better with it I recommend you do it for your diesel vehicle these last two are, are a bit of a you know some people don't agree some people do Here's something to think about. I think the next one is don't fill up your def tank, right? So your def tank, uh, your diesel exhaust fluid, it's part of the urea injection system. The best thing you can do for your urea injection system, your def system, is to make sure that it's the most, is the freshest fluid that you can possibly get. If you're filling up your tank every single time to the top and you don't really use your truck as much as you should and you don't use it as hard as you should, then your def fluid is not being refreshed as much as it should. So what that means is if def fluid gets old and you know if you buy already old def fluid that can happen sometimes and it stays in there, it crystallizes. If you get crystallizing def fluid after a time, it cooks up the sensors, it cooks up the injector, it cooks up the whole system and it's very expensive to replace that system. It can cost anywhere between uh, $1,200 to over $2,000 depending on what broke to fix the def injection system. You definitely don't want to deal with that. So what I say, my recommendation is whenever you run out of death fluid and your, the Colorado ZR2 diesel does tell you when it's running out, I usually get a five gallon tank and I fill up most of it, but that's it. I leave it at that. That way, about once every couple of months, I do have to keep refilling it. And that's not a big deal to me. You know, it makes sure that I keep the freshest fluid possible, freshest death fluid possible in the system. Another thing people do is buy death fluid in bulk and they keep using it for years and years and years. Don't do that, terrible idea. You make sure you get the freshest fluid you can possibly find. You don't want that stuff crystallizing and coking up your system. It is a terrible idea. Finally, and again, I learned this from owning diesel equipment, from owning my Kubota skid steer, is don't jab at the throttle. Most diesel vehicles, the new ones, especially trucks, they, they have electronic throttle. So when, if you're gonna jab the throttle, it doesn't actually do that. Try it on your, on your if you have a Colorado diesel, try just moving your foot like this. Try moving it like that. See if, you're, see if the, the engine replies at all. Guarantee you it doesn't. Now, people install these power commanders to trick the, the, the pedal in your system to get that extra responsiveness. Don't do it. If you have your DPF and if you have your urea injection system, do not do that. You, don't, you do not want to do that because stabbing your, your foot, stabbing that electron accelerator pedal, if it actually responds to it, what it does is it injects a whole bunch of fuel into the system. The turbo doesn't have enough time to spool up, so it doesn't get burnt, and so you get a whole bunch of un unburnt fuel going through the system. And I guarantee you, your def your def system and your DPF system do not like it when you do that. It is a terrible time. You definitely want to avoid that. So as much as you can, try to avoid just stabbing it, uh, stabbing the accelerator pedal. Just do not do it. Like I said, the biggest problem is your your turbo doesn't spool up fast enough. 
you get unburnt fuel going through it completely clogs up your dpf you have to do more regens it's not something you want to do if you have a power commander system or a system that tricks your your pedal into into making it more responsive if you have a diesel vehicle take it off take it off immediately you do not want it i may have to do a separate video for this because again any sudden stabs of the accelerator if the engine responds to it it injects a whole bunch of fuel you're gonna have a bad time all right guys that wraps up the video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was helpful to you these are some of the tips and tricks i've learned after researching owning diesel vehicles i hope that i have a 335d that's been deleted for quite a while now and i have this zr2 diesel i'm going to add another diesel vehicle very soon uh it's going to be another build it's going to be actually a build for my wife jane i can't wait to get it. it's going to be an x5 diesel uh, i'm going to build it out with a wrangler door track tire so if you enjoyed the video let me know if you disagree with anything let me know in the comments let me know what you guys think if i missed anything Again, let me know. I may, I may do a secondary video just to kind of update this. Again, if I missed something, I don't think I did, but you guys let me know in the comments. You guys are very smart over there. Uh, I, but yeah, if you want to see the build, if you want to see the future of what I'm going to do with a truck, what I'm going to do with my, my wife's vehicle, make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you don't miss videos. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.